Uh, I am Professor S.K. Sinha from PGI Chandigarh. Uh, I work in the Department of Gastroenterology and uh, as some of you might be aware that May 19th May is celebrated world over as Inflammatory Bowel Disease Day. When we talk of inflammatory bowel disease, when then we are talking of two conditions uh, that is ulcerative colitis and Crohn's disease. In both these conditions uh, are known to affect our intestines. Uh, ulcerative colitis affects dominantly uh, our large intestine and it leads, leads to ulcerations in the large intestine. Uh, in uh, other condition that is Crohn's disease, the both small intestine and large intestine are affected and there can be ulcerations, strictures uh, and abscess formation in and around uh, both a small bowel and large, large bowel. So, it can happen in any age group, it can ha happen in the children, it can happen in the adults and sometimes it can start even in the elderly people. As far as the cause of the IBD goes, the cause is not very clear, but one thing is very sure that uh, this is not related to infection. This is important to understand for the uh, uh, general population that this is not a contagious disease. So, somebody who is suffering from IBD, if you interact with the person, you eat with them, play with them, mingle with them, then it is not risky for you. So, mainly most people believe that this is some sort of autoimmune, uh, autoimmune disease when their our body system uh, makes some mistake uh, by virtue of uh, disturbance in our inflammatory pathway in recognition of the different antigens. Normally what happens that our body recognizes self antigen as a self and does not destroy them. Whereas, if anything goes from outside, then it tend to destroy, de, uh, tend to destroy uh, those antigens. So, what happens in this situation that our self antigens are not so well recognized and that is why this disease happens. There are many factors uh, related with inflammatory bowel disease. Sometimes uh, the risk in the family members, first degree relatives may be slightly higher if the index patient is suffering from uh, uh, inflammatory bowel disease. However, as I explained you earlier that this condition is not contagi contagious and does not spread from one person to another person. Generally, everybody wants to know when uh, one should suspect that he or she is suffering from inflammatory bowel disease. The most common symptom of both ulcerative colitis and Crohn's disease remains chronic diarrhea. And when we talk of chronic diarrhea, we mean that uh, diarrhea which is persisting for more than 4 weeks that is called chronic diarrhea. This is in contrast to acute diarrhea which tends to be self, self limiting, lasts for a few days and tends to sus subside spontaneously uh, or sometimes with the antibiotic uses. However, the chronic diarrhea tend to persist beyond 4 weeks and then we should suspect IBD. Most patients of IBD will have uh, chronic diarrhea and in addition their uh, stool will contain some amount of blood. So, for general population for uh, everybody it is important to understand if somebody is having bloody diarrhea of more than four, 4 weeks duration then it is time to consider uh, inflammatory bowel disease either ulcerative colitis or Crohn's disease and one should consult uh, his or her doctor and uh, as you understand that this is era of a specialty. So, one has to go to gastroenterologist to, in, to get uh, the investigator for these symptoms. And diagnosis is relatively straightforward. Most people will be subjected to an examination which is called colonoscopy. In colonoscopy examination, one small flexible tube fitted with a video camera is passed per rectally and that examines whole of the large intestine and maybe part of the small intestine is also examined. And if it shows any changes, either ulceration, hyperemia, friability, or any changes then biopsies can be taken either for histopathological examination or for microbiological examination. Generally biopsy and colonoscopy these two investigations are good enough to make the diagnosis of ulcerative colitis and Crohn's disease. Sometimes it is supplemented by the uh, radiological investigation like MRI and CT scan. So, uh, it is very important for everybody to understand that whenever chronic diarrhea occurs to anybody be to you your friends, your acquaintance, your relatives, refer all those patients, all those subjects to gastroenterologists for proper investigation. So, 
when uh, it is very important to make the proper diagnosis because very good treatment options are available now and in contrast to uh, previous therapy the newer therapies are much more effective efficacious and are known to uh, control the disease in a better manner and even can change the course of the disease so previously we previously previously available treatment used to control the symptoms but they they were not known to change the course of the disease whereas current therapies which have become available over last few years they are known to modify the course of the disease most of these patients are treated by medical treatment only and very small percentage my perception will be only 5 to 10% of the patients will require uh, surgical treatment surgical treatment is required in uh, certain situations one group a small group is uh, patients uh, who don't respond well to medical therapy they can be subjected the other group who don't respond uh, to medical therapy or during course of medical therapy they tend to develop complications like leakage from the intestine or uh, severe hemorrhage then for emergency indications they uh, they uh, undergo surgery sometimes what happens that uh, large intestine gets dilated uh, because of severe activity of the disease that situation is called toxic colon that also requires surgery but overall only 5 to 10 percent of the patients uh, of inflammatory bowel disease will require surgery rest all of them will be treated medically and most of uh, almost all of them will respond well however it is in important to understand that disease uh, disease requires long term therapy therapy once it started tend to uh, uh, one has to continue for uh, several years the dose will uh, vary according to according to stage of the disease activity of the disease this disease has got tendency for a spontaneous remission and relapses so th with therapy what happens that relapses will decrease will subside in some of the patients but if you are receiving treatment and you have occasional relapses one should not be too worried or think that uh, treatment is not effective once in a while the disease will get flare up and which require intensification of therapy but it is very very important to continue the therapy and maintain the therapy and continue the maintenance therapy this is very important because uh, this helps in preventing various complications which include occurrence of anemia occurrence of toxic megacolon which i i i, I talked a short while ago then uh, long term complication and even occurrence of malignancy which in uncontrolled disease is known to occur after several years of uh, activity so all those risk uh, decreases then we have uh, complications coming up in the liver if the disease remains active so th all those uh, uh, things will decrease most people want to know that can the disease be controlled with diet alone diet uh, restrictions help in control of symptoms but as far as the remission is concerned uh, that uh, diet doesn't play uh, a major role but you need to uh, uh, restrict certain substance intake and uh, that is very important to understand in addition to diet one has to avoid certain category of drug that is equally important normal population people keep on taking what we say analgesic or anti inflammatory drugs and but in an in anti inflammatory drugs other than paracetamol paracetamol can be taken but other than paracetamol can be uh, can cause flare of uh, flare up of the ulcerative colitis and crohn's disease so whenever we treat these patients most of the time we explain those patients that they should avoid taking over the counter painkiller medication except uh, for the con um, when it is uh, under medical prescription one important questions people ask particularly uh, young ladies who are who are in the fertile age group that whether they can have babies uh, fertility largely in this condition will remain unaffected so they, the fertility will uh, will be nearly normal uh, but it is very important that if somebody knows that he or she uh, she is suffering from ulcerative colitis or crohn's disease pregnancy should be planned rather than uh, should be coming spontaneously at any point of time so it is always preferable if before pregnancy the disease is controlled well with the treatment and the lady becomes pregnant when when the disease is controlled but despite all these measures we do come across patients who who become who become pregnant with even with the active disease the pregnancy makes 
the chances of uh, relapse slightly higher than no normal. However, uh, the important point is that treatment has to be continued through the pre pregnancy. And most of the drugs which we use here are relatively safe in pregnancy. The risk of discontinuing treatment is much more compared to continuing the treatment through the pregnancy. So, by and large, what happens that when uh, the lady becomes pregnant, she will she needs to be seen by a gynecologist. In addition, she needs to be seen by uh, gastroenterologist at regular interval. Her treatment needs to modified uh, modify regularly. The risk of active disease is higher compared to the risk of continuing treatment. So, it makes a sense that treatment should be continued and most of the drugs will be continued as such as was con continued prior to uh, becoming pregnant. Next question uh, many people ask that do I need to take treatment uh, forever lifelong. Certain conditions as you know that diabetes, hypertension, once the medication is started it has to be continued for virtually lifelong. I will not say this is going to happen in IBD, but uh, most of the patients of inflammatory bowel disease either ulcerative colitis or Crohn's disease, they are going to require treatment for several years and if disease remains controlled for two more than two years, then uh, treatment discontinuation can be considered, but this will strictly hap should happen strictly under supervision of qualified gastroenterologist. So, treatment is long, but it may not be lifelong. Uh, then uh, then become uh, that uh, what happens to our kids or children, can I have kids, will they have risk. Okay, uh, as I mentioned already that fertility is nearly normal in females and most of the males also will have normal fer fertility. So, they can have kids like uh, normal population. However, because this is uh, has a genetic predisposition. So, vulnerability for this disease may be has, has some bearing uh, uh, dependent to some extent on the genes. So, the risk may be slightly higher than normal population for those who have their family members affected by inflammatory bowel disease. However, by and large the pregnancy is not contraindicated, it is not advisable that because of suffering from IBD somebody should avoid pregnancy or should not have kids. So, even without bothering for, for that. As of now, prenatal diagnosis is not available, available so one can plan the uh, plan for the uh, babies like a normal, po normal population. Uh, thank you all for listening and I will request you again to uh, motivate your friends, family, acquaintance, everybody. If anybody is having bloody diarrhea of, of more than 4 weeks duration, he or she should Con contact gastroenterologist at the earliest, it can be IBD.